I knew that I never really got rid of it. It was always there. It was always there in the back of my mind. And that always created some very deep, unsettling anxiety. And I know that. And I was just, in a sense, deceiving myself by thinking that everything was okay. And I suggest and would suggest that a lot of our tinnitus community feel the same. And it's not anybody's fault. It's just that we kind of think we're in a place where it's all right and then we leave it and then we don't do any more work on it. We don't even talk about it. We don't involve ourselves with anything to do with tinnitus because we fear that moment that it comes back and it gets worse. Hello and welcome back to another episode on the Outering Tinnitus podcast. My name is Frieder and I'm your host and on this show everything is about how you can build your best life despite tinnitus. My interview guest today and I'm very 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 happy and pleased to have him on the show is Rupert Brown from the UK. He is co-founder um, of the app T minus a tinnitus sound therapy and tinnitus sound management app which um, has released um, on iOS already so when you go to the iOS store you can find that um, we had a great conversation all about tinnitus anxiety tinnitus spikes his long years living with tinnitus his ways of dealing with tinnitus the great people and support that he found in his life in dealing with tinnitus and I'm um, just in general very very pleased to having had the opportunity to have Rupert on the show um, now before we get into the show and into the intro I wanted to advertise a few things myself um, as usual you guys are very welcome to join the most positive online tinnitus community out there which is my Facebook group you can find uh, the link to the Facebook group in the description to this episode below um, also if you're relatively new to tinnitus I can always suggest to go to outringtinnitus.com slash tinnitus minus emergency minus guide and you can get my individual step-by-step uh, -step guide on how to start transforming your tinnitus anxiety and if that is not enough I'm offering uh, from as little as nine or 9.99 a month I offer my subscription to patreon where I create weekly 10-minute videos including introductions to tinnitus how to deal with tinnitus spikes and so on and so forth and for as little as 10 euros a month you can become a member of the patreon community um, I can only coach so and so many people at the same time that's why I decided to make these 10-minute videos on patreon to make my practices as much accessible Accessible as possible. But let's get into the episode with Rupert Brown, the founder of the T Minus app. Hello and welcome to the Outering Tinnitus podcast. This is Frida and I'm your host. This podcast is all about the tinnitus science and what you can do to live a better life despite the ringing. Today we have another very special guest on the Outring Tinnitus podcast. Um, it's Rupert from the UK and uh, he and his team created uh, the T- minus app and I'm super, super happy and glad to have him on the show today. Welcome, Rupert. Thank you, Frida. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. I've seen some of your work and you're like this amazing kind of like matrix tinnitus kind of um, anarchist activist, which I, I really <laughs> appreciate. It's fantastic. So I, I found you. you through this spurious route and now we've been connected by Jack Rubinacci, which is fantastic. A great guy. Yeah, Jack, who's also been on this podcast before already, and um, I love what Jack is doing as well. And uh, we had a, a very, very serious discussion because, um, yeah, well, many musicians especially have this problem. So I think Jack is the go-to person for uh, people and musicians with tinnitus, and I really, really enjoyed having that conversation. Um, but let's focus on our conversation today. Um, I would learn a, a little bit, I uh, would like to learn a little bit about yourself. Why don't you tell the listeners a bit about, um, yeah, maybe a, a brief intro about yourself and also about the story of T minus. That would be very interesting. Thanks, Frida. Well, essentially what happened is, is that I, I'm a drummer and um, I was doing a gig at Ronnie Scott's Jazz Club um, in London, in Soho, and I was 22. And I was working with Roy Ayers, a great legendary jazz American vibraphone player. And um, 
it was a four week gig. And then I was due to go to America to really, I guess, start this new career with him. I, I was chosen to, to be in his band. And two weeks in, I nearly came off stage and collapsed. Something really seriously went wrong. And um, I'd lost all sensation uh, in my left ear. I didn't really know anything else because the jazz club is very, very loud. And, um, it, you know, so I, it wasn't until I kind of went outside to check because I, I just felt something was so seriously wrong. And I was just horrified. I nearly collapsed with fear, panic. It was like my life. I realized my life as Rupert Brown, this person that I'd constructed since birth kind of was in a tense. It was gone. His life is over. And um, I had eight different tinnitus sounds that were oh. all all dramatic. They were yeah. awful. It was like um, the kind of scene that I will set is if you can imagine you're in the middle of an ocean, you're on a lighthouse, you've got helicopters, you've got jet engines overhead, you've got propeller planes flying around you, then you've got the crashing waves, then you've got this high pitch bell that sounds like it's coming from a distant mountain top which had no rhythm to it everything was discombobul- oh sorry george everything was- <laughs> for all the listeners that was, that was the cat we hope it wasn't too loud <laughs> <laughs> everything was just wrong and didn't make sense and i went back in to the ceremonial well done everyone yeah great gig and i kind of was like just wow. i said well i just went oh thanks and straight home and when I got home and I, I have a non-religious faith in myself that allows me to open the door every day and face the world and do something positive but I, I so I'm not religious per se but I wrote on my wall of my bedroom that night I wrote please God make this go away in pen wow. on the wall it was so loud and and it was just coming from everywhere plus I was deaf in that ear so it was all in the brain in the mind and I didn't know anything about it so what happened was is that you know we probably might talk about aspects of those years but move it forward 30 years so we're 30 years later about four years ago I I've been working with this great record label called Abbey Records they're amazing they're an independent label we oh, yeah and, um, I love them and um I work quite a lot um, for them as as one of their drummers there and um, they were making an app for a great artist called Yala Barnhoft who was one of their artists at the time and um, I really liked it and then it was very ahead of its time and then it, everything dies down and new technology sometimes doesn't really get the credit it deserved and it kind mm. of other people mm. copied it and mm. you know so they'd forgotten about apps for a while and I'd never forgotten it. I downloaded it and I paid for it and I loved it. And um, we were just having um, a dinner one night for Christmas a few, well, four years ago. And Simon Rodley, who's one of the co-founders along with James Rodley, he said, what are you up to Rupert? And I said, well, I've been making this sound therapy. I, I really believe in it. I think it's really interesting. He said, what's that for? I said, for tinnitus. And he said, yeah, I know you've always had tinnitus and, uh, He has people in his family that have had hearing conditions. And he said, well, tell me more. And I said, well, this is what I'd like to do. Actually, I hadn't thought about it until I've just seen you. I've got this sound therapy. I'm on the first edition of it. I've got environment. I think it's great. I've been directed from all over the place to do this. Namely, you know, the universe was telling me to do this. Um, and my upper self all of the things that i'd learned from tinnitus i decided yeah. to put into this practice and he said well what do you want to do about it? i said i'd like you to make me an app with me and he said all right come around tomorrow and we went around the next day and he we shook on it and he said i'm not going to make anything from this but um i'll be really happy to participate in this and uh, coming from a businessman which simon is as well as a great person He recognized that this was good for humanity. You know, it's a really good thing to do. And he was happy to finance it. So that's how it came about. Amazing. Great story. That is, um, I, I, I always believe, you know, us who who do work um, yeah, in helping people with tinnitus, it, it is like, I'm, I'm not particularly religious myself, but no. to, to, share, to share this story with you yesterday, I had... Um, 
a first uh, chat with uh, one lady um, from the US. She has a four-year-old daughter and she um, got a severe hearing trauma from an MRI gone wrong. So the MRI machine was, was broken and it was insanely loud. And she came out um, literally similarly to you, what you experienced, maybe not as dramatic, but uh, enough that she has severe hyperacusis and very, very loud tinnitus right now. She has a four-year-old daughter. She is a Spanish teacher. So she lives in California and she's a Spanish teacher. And, um, you know, it's very, very difficult for her to be with tinnitus and the hyperacusis. And in some way, I know that she wants to transition in new positions and new things. And I, I, I believe that because she went to various doctors, not even on her insurance network, you know, ENTs, and they all, she told me, no one was able to give her the proper advice. No one was able to tell her anything apart from, oh, there's nothing you can do. Just don't worry about it. Yeah. And just severe anxiety. So not sleeping well, not being able to perform your job because of the hyperacusis, because when you talk loud, it, it hurts your ears and so on and so forth. But I believe there is some, something out there. It might be destiny. Um, and how sometimes our path cross, and that is for the benefit of all of us. So in, in us helping other people, and for sure, for you, it's more difficult that you probably help more people at the same time with the, with the T-minus app because you're simply able to reach more people, right? Um, but in general, to, to, for these paths to cross and for you to be able to support that person to grow into... Uh, to grow past these issues and these difficulties is something that is is beyond monetary gain as well. And it's something that, I mean, of course, I, I, I also try to make part of my living with what I do. Um, and and, and this, is, this is my passion as well. But um, uh, really, many of it and, and much of it is really beyond any monetary gain, because I also believe in th there is a purpose for me being here on this planet, doing this podcast, sharing information and um, giving people the information about tinnitus and maybe taking a bit of their fear away. And that is a purpose that, you know, no job could supply me with, you know, no, no employee position could supply me with so far. And um, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm also very, very uh, grateful that you took up the time to really pursue this project and, and put such a great app on the market. Um, um, so do you really do you do, do you quickly want to tell the people where they can where, can, where they can get the app? Is it available on iOS and or Android or where is it available currently? At the moment, it's only on iOS. Um, mm -hmm. We were going to have an Android and we were going to have it made with a wonderful woman called Deeksha, who's um, based in, in India, in Mumbai. And she's an amazing person. She helps to run the Billionaires Organization, which is almost like the equivalent of the uh, British Tinnitus Association. Um, and um, as the pandemic took over, um, the money that we were going to have raised or, or trying to raise um, through uh, Indian channels obviously was uh, being used for therapeutic medicine and um, all sorts of types of things to help alleviate the, the condition of what was happening at the time. So um, we shelved that. So it's on iOS at the moment. So I can, I've got it written down here. Okay, so I can, um, so if you go to uh, the, uh, the app store and you just look up, um, let me see, you just look up tinnitus, um, T minus tinnitus wellness app, or you can get also the information from our email, which is www.tstroke-info and you'll be able to download it from there. Um, but again, just to, to go back what, to what you're saying, I think for me, the path with music has been a very similar path is that essentially first and foremost, and I know what you're saying also, it, it resonates greatly with me is that this is devotional what we're doing. I'm devoted to doing this. I'm devoted to wanting to help my community. I was devoted to helping myself initially when I wanted to gain expression from music you know the idea was you know you start as a drummer and then you gravitate and hopefully become a musician and then hopefully that holy grail which we're still aiming for I think I can maybe look and touch the ladder but I'm looking at becoming an artist you know that's yeah there's this place that you want to keep working and yeah, yeah that has nothing to do with the Yankee dollar that's for sure it has everything to do with practice um perseverance and ultimately devotional behavior. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and if you don't mind, if I ask, if, may I ask you, um, how's your tinnitus today? 
How did the story? Yeah. It's good. I mean, yeah. so I've had so many setbacks in my life over the mm. 30 years. I, I had that initial tinnitus and, um, you know, I used a very, very simple, um, archaic sound therapy because there was nothing around. So when I was 22, I had three different types of Japanese boogie boxes. You know, you, you press a play and, you know, you've got your own speaker and you've got a radio. I would, I would have to look that up because I'm not sure what that is, but uh, I'll, I'll look they're it like, up. They're like big um, hip hop cassette tape players. Okay. You know, you okay. see somebody walking around New York. Yeah, in yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. In, um, yeah. what was that movie again? Uh, uh, okay, I, I, I can't remember the name now from, um, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's yeah. It's probably like um, some sort of like, uh, yeah, like a great kind of hip hop movie or something like Spike that. Lee, yeah, Spike, Spike Lee, Spike, Spike Lee. Spike Lee, like Mo Better Blues or. Yeah, or yeah, the, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Spike Lee movie. Um, so, um. Yeah, I had three of those. I had two initially, and then I had another one kicking around back home. And I put them together. And basically, if you press play and record, and you press pause, and you turn up the tone, and you turn up the volume, you get this incredible hiss sound. So I had two to start with, and then I added a third. So what I didn't realize is that essentially what I was doing was getting pink noise, blue noise, and brown noise. At the they same time. Same okay. Thing. And that was enough, even at the time. And I was young. So in a sense, I was very naive and ignorant, which helped actually to start with. It yeah. helped yeah. because yeah. I didn't know anything. And mm. what I noticed is that I could have it all, all the time through the day. I could have it at night time, but I made it worse for a bit of time. And I realized I made it worse because what I was doing was um, I was blocking it. And I realized that by blocking it, your brain and tinnitus loves that. Also, it loves anxiety, absolutely dwells and thrives on anxiety. So when you're in that heightened state of uh, fight or flight, the last thing you want to do is to then encourage the brain to produce more tinnitus. So I realized quite quickly is if I matched it, it didn't make the tinnitus worse. But what I realized is that when I pulled it down, so I pulled the sounds lower than my tinnitus, I would notice occasionally it would be like, oh, it, it, it felt like elastic in my ears it felt like i could play with tinnitus it sounds perverse but this is essentially what i'm trying to do now is get people to get to a state where your tinnitus becomes elastic and you can start to go to play with it mm. and that sounds quite like a perverse thing to say but actually that's how it works for me so you know essentially the idea was to really create something um through the sound therapy that immediately took it to a very different place. It wasn't distraction. We were using desensitization and also I was targeting tinnitus frequencies from my own bad experiences of, um, you know, um, targeting and weaponizing those sounds. So almost like an oral skin graft. And that was the difference with all the other cynical apps that are out there. Cause I don't think there's anything that I've seen. There's good cognitive behavioral therapy with quite a lot of the apps, which is good. Yeah. Although I have another, theory about that also um, me too me too yeah great because i'm not sure i'm not saying i disagree with it not at all but i think there are other stages before you get to that stage possibly yeah. that's just me anyhow my tinnitus right now i can't really hear it to be honest with you i mean it's there um it does spike but i also have been experimenting on myself i've been making spikes happen deliberately so i wear things like that if i'm teaching because i drum teach all the time so i'm a producer and i write music all the time so and i also i also have this my little leather bag of all different types different of different types um, of ear earplugs yeah yeah all from acs which we're aligned with which are, yeah. which is lifesavers so i've used them all the time for years and then yeah, yeah. i also have portable things like um uh, little white noise generator oh, so wow. I have all the things and then I have the app so if I don't need it to have all of these little lovely little toolkit items right. around right plus the app right it's like it's your your what you're doing is you're taking any notion of tension out of your lifestyle right. because you know you have the right tool set to cope when it comes back in and it, it gets disturbing Absolutely. you have the tool set to cope with it so I've been creating spikes deliberately um the idea is that what I've been experimenting with, which is 
what's going to be in the new part of the app next year, it will be next year because I want to get it right, is how we react to spikes. That's what I'm obsessed with. And I have been for the last year and a half. So I've been creating spikes so that I learn to understand them more. Now, I'm not saying anybody go out there and do it. I'm just <laughs> doing it to myself because I yeah. want to understand. Yeah. What yeah. I found with myself, it's not this may not be the same with everybody else, but it does obviously make the tinnitus worse. So you're encouraging tinnitus. But what I've noticed is it's the way that I perceive the sound of it. Is it non-threatening? Yes, it is. So it's not going to endanger me or hurt me. Am I reacting to it badly? No, because I know what's happening to me. Right. Okay, so I'm going to go to play with it and I'm going to then use the sound therapy um, that I'm also making all the time. I'm going to go to, to war with it. I'm going to have a little play. I'm going to have a play with it. And then what I find is that when I soak myself in that sound therapy for 10 days, what happens is, is that it feels like plasticine. It's like my tinnitus in a kind of very esoteric sense feels like I can start to play with it now and wow. I can change the, I can change the sound of it wow. so I can bring it down. So basically, yeah, as I'm talking to you, because I'm talking, I guess, quite emotionally because I'm excited to talk to you. Um, maybe it's one. Sometimes it's two. When I when I'm playing, I, I can get a, a good six, but I, I'm not. It doesn't last. And I know why it's happened, because I've encouraged it. But generally, yeah, my tinnitus is about a one or a two. Wow. Um, and I do music all the time. I'm, you know, um, if you look there, I mean, there's drum kits. There's two drum kits. Can you see right that? There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see it. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'm teaching or I'm practicing upstairs as a studio. It's music is everywhere. There's a piano here. So I use sound in a way. Sound is the thing that kind of damaged me. But I've gone back and I've fallen back in love with sound. And now sound is the thing that has enriched me and it's healed me to all intents and purposes. Wow. What an amazing story. Um, of course, we have to say here, like you are basically, if we would talk about uh, the Buddha, about B the Buddhist religion, you are close to uh, the Buddhist enlightenment, so to say, of uh, tinnitus and town therapy. So we would probably not, uh, this is metaphorically spoken, right? Of course. So um, of course. You you're at, at one of the later stages of like, really non-reactionally being able to create spikes deal with your tinnitus and so on and so forth and this would obviously for many people probably not be so recommended right especially at the at the early <laughs> stages and and probably for me you know I, i would say my tinnitus is like a but for me it's a difficult right I'm, i'm completely deaf on one ear and uh, i have this hearing aid that i need on my right ear because Otherwise, I don't really hear so well anymore. And then obviously when the hearing aid is out, the tinnitus is, is, is a good eight or nine. Um, yes. But when it is in and the hearing aid helps me to basically perceive other things more, um, it's, it's, it's no problem. So the only thing to me that is like eye-opening is when I take out the hearing aid, I'm like, whoa, that's yes. uh, wow, that's very loud. And that's very, you know, I, I can't hear the other things anymore. But You know, at night, for example, I use these little yellow foam earplugs to sleep because I find my tinnitus a nicer sound to sleep with than the sounds from the outside that distract me. So I prefer yes. my, my tinnitus to, to, to sleep and, and an earplug instead of uh, masking it or something. Because I, and this is a segue into a little bit of a question, which I would like to, because I got into that um, in quite an interesting discussion on LinkedIn and also in my community on tinnitus masking. And My approach is, and I've had some people who I've been working with, who, in my opinion, use the tinnitus masking as a deference of anxiety. So basically blocking anxiety out, masking the tinnitus away, and unwilling to face the very, very unpleasant feelings associated with the tinnitus, right? This is a stage that you surpassed, obviously. And But but I would like to know, what would you tell uh, people? How can they find that sweet spot, right? Where you uh, use sound therapy as an additional tool But, um, and this is also the addition where I would say that we have to do in top of cognitive behavioral therapy, uh, telling people, look, this is the ABC model. This is um, how your thoughts go. And this is how you react. Um, maybe you could also react in a different way. But the more interesting thing is like, how can you allow your feelings of anxiety, negative and feelings to be with you, right? And then to overcome them as well 
in that way, basically creating a new association with tinnitus, saying like, okay, tinnitus is probably not dangerous. So it would be super interesting to hear from you. How can I find that sweet spot that tinnitus masking is basically not pushing everything away, but really helping me in my tinnitus process. Is there something that you could recommend? Definitely. And it's kind of in a sense what I'm trying, I've been working on for a year and a half because I had to go back and look at the things that work for me. And I've had terrible setbacks throughout my life. I've had terrible times in 2008 where it all happened again. Hmm. And then I had earwax removal and that went bad. And then I went on tour and then I had hyperacusis and then it happened later on. Hmm. So I've had dreadful setbacks. So I know perception changing and reaction changing plus sound therapy great clinical information those three things are the things that help you get over it but the idea really is that early on my my kind of own philosophy because um i think i had to follow my own instincts really um it wasn't that i didn't trust any anybody or anything but i i kind of we've become experts on our, on our own tinnitus haven't we really you know um yeah and so in the early days the idea was that we all talk about or some of us do about this tinnitus monster and so i knew that i never really got rid of it it was always there it was always there in the back of my mind and that always created some very deep unsettling anxiety and i know that and i was just in a sense deceiving myself by thinking that everything was okay and i suggest and would suggest that a lot of our tinnitus community feel the same And it's not anybody's fault. It's just that we kind of think we're in a place where it's all right and then we leave it and then we don't do any more work on it. We don't even talk about it. We don't involve ourselves with anything to do with tinnitus because we fear that moment that it comes back and it gets worse. So what I did was I then later on in 2008 went further with it when I had an accident. Only change happens in us is when it's forced on us, isn't it? otherwise we don't do anything so then what i was working on was the perception in a sense of that monster trying to turn it into a cuddly toy or a pet and so i did that right. there was a lot and, of work involved and and as association right making a mental note and associating your tinnitus with something non harmful yeah. Mm -hmm. okay yeah that was it so yeah. eventually it was like this lovely docile pet like george um and yeah. um And then I would send it out into the woods to play. But right. in a sense, it, it was, but it always came back right. like a docile pet. Right. Now, the difference being now, the way I feel about it now is that, Frida, it is a monster. But why don't I just accept that it's a monster and understand the monster? Yeah. Why do I need to turn it into anything? Right. I have tinnitus. Why don't I now turn the monster into my own tinnitus? Right. And why don't I now look at my own tinnitus? Right. And then why don't I now understand my own tinnitus? So it's not a monster. It doesn't have to be a pet. Oh, it's me. I'm the one creating it. I'm the creator of this. I'm going to now take self-responsibility And I'm now going to go back and I'm going to go on a journey because I need to look at those hierarchical emotions that are damaging my perceived route back to acceptance yeah. and then ultimately into wellness. So, for example, you're struggling. Say you've had a setback and you go and see me and I'm not where I'm at right now. So I'm pretending I'm just somebody that's going to put you somewhere. So. You've come to me, you've had a dreadful setback, you've had a spike that lasts two years and, and you're suffering. And I'm going to say, well, why don't you, Frida, why don't you go and do some yoga? What? This yeah, is what was yeah. happening to me. I don't want yeah. to do yoga. I mean, yoga is no. fantastic, but I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. I haven't taken self-responsibility. Yeah. I can't suddenly switch on a light and go, yeah, great. Oh, yeah, I'm going to do yoga. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, I'm yeah. fine. Yeah. No way. Yeah. No way. I need to map yeah. the maze and what i've tried to do is create yeah and people will know later on it will be in the app and we'll be talking about is this maze matrix which is this place of hierarchical emotional problems that we have to overcome right. which is fear 
loneliness, right. Right. anxiety, sadness, anxiety. Absolutely. Yeah. 100%. We have to look at trauma yeah. to start with before you might want to go um, and go and do some yoga, which would be yeah. great for you. Yeah. And then yeah. everything yeah. else takes place. But the way I discovered it to start with, I've always stumbled upon things naturally. So I was suffering with, say, fear of heights for when I had my setback in quite a lot of years ago. And the only way I could deal with it was to, I didn't know really, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't want to read anything. I just wanted to use my instincts. And so the idea of Frida was to go mountain climbing. So I used to go to this place called the Lake District. I went for five years in a row, twice a year. What the idea was to not be, um, to, to go back home and not be afraid, quite the opposite, was to look at being scared try and understand it a little bit more, understand myself, understand the way I react to fear. Yeah, yeah, love it. So it yeah. never went away, but I just got more used to dealing with it. So I yeah. understood its framework more. Yeah. And so that yeah. really put me in good stead. So in a sense, yeah. like you're saying, what I would yeah. say to that person is to, I think what we have to do is try and work on the anxiety, obviously. But the first thing I would say right now in this world, if we want to get rid of anxiety, is switch off the goddamn television. You know, right. Right. get rid of mainstream media, get rid right. of anything that is yeah. uh, just yeah. spewing fear and um, revolting um, uh, emotional drivel about being afraid and yeah. distancing and socially not being with people. No, no, no. Um, yeah. I, I think kindness love showing affection for one another having the conversation uh being there for people tinnitus hates that it hates happiness you know it hates togetherness and and i would say you know in a way we have to turn off this stuff at the moment and turn into something else which is you know i have actually been experimenting with my own emotions these last two weeks i've been doing these very deep meditations and working with this great meditator called Jordan Rowe, who's based in Thailand, who's a great meditation coach uh, who's contributing. Awesome. And um, what I've been doing is self-isolating, but not self-isolating, you know, not in the traditional sense over these two years. Right. I just mean I need to come back on myself. Right. Because where I live on the Isle of Wight, it's very much... Um, there's a lot of fear on the island. I don't have the fear, but that's because I've worked on it. I've worked on fear. So I'm not afraid. And um, But I need to go inwards because I need to isolate, i.e. I need to take out the good stuff and filter out this at the moment. Because right, right. At, at the moment, I think I really need to give my time to this project even more. It's like you're talking about devotional right. behavioural patterns that's right. what i want to do so i'm going inward at the moment because i need to go on this exploration which is this right. journey into the self again and to work on self-acceptance and that journey to wellness so i've got to go through it too if i'm going to try and help people with it and i have to go through that yeah i i say exactly the same and i i can concur with um like all of you just said before, and yesterday, I, I, some of my story was yesterday in my meditation. For the last few days, I've had a tinnitus spike. So usually my spikes don't last longer than like the very high ones and super loud ones, only, only 30 seconds. And then sometimes I get for a couple of hours, like just really also a higher pitch and, and, and like even more demanding one that is making it difficult for me to focus on work or when my wife talks to me and, and that's more difficult. But you know, same thing to me, like yesterday, I was like, okay, I'm committing to doing my daily 20 minute meditation. And yes. I am sitting down and whatever comes up in this time, you know, and this is what people mistake. This is what people mistake when they when they tell you to meditate with tinnitus. This is not for you to shut it out, right? Not for you to push all of it away. But the, the difficulty and the goal of that is to withstand whatever is arising in these 20 minutes of calm and looking inward. And this is the way we want to deal with tinnitus, not in a framework of, um, or maybe an additional tool, right? The cognitive behavioral therapy model is very interesting in order to analyze your behavior and then yes. get a good look at when your anxiety pops in. And because most people, they come to me and they say like, I'm so anxious about it. And I always have to deal with my anxiety. I'm like, but are you dealing with your anxiety? 
are you listening to your emotion? Are you letting your emotion go through your body? You know, these are these are very, very powerful tools to Great. create a reaction to tinnitus that is not based on fear and avoidance, but a yes. reaction to tinnitus that signals your brain. And this is proven science. And this is, they call it in science, acceptance and commitment therapy. I guess you've heard of that as well. So it is, this is what I think is one of the, uh, that's the yeah. kind of model that I want to work with personally, yeah. Frida, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And that's, 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 I mean, this is just a framework and, and the name to it, right? What the scientific yeah. community calls it. But what yes. I really... Uh, feel uh, feel and and take out of it is i work with people we look at their tinnitus framework when it comes up when it's really bad and i have to do this myself so when there is a spike i might be afraid i might be wanting to mask it and push it out but what i do is i sit down and i do a 20 20 to 30 minute meditation with the spike and whatever comes up that is completely okay and i deal with it head You're on amazing. and this is what i try and coach and teach people right because this is the this is sort of the nugget, right? You know, where, where I say like, you know, well, if you have all this anxiety and fear and if you use masking or something like that, you're pushing it out, right? And if you don't yeah. want to deal with it. So that I is agree with the you. wrong way. And that way you fuel your tinnitus and you fuel your anxiety because the more you push it away, the more it comes back in a bad moment. For example, when you go, go to bed, right? And the masking is not as strong anymore. And then it comes back and your night of sleep is ruined. So... You're absolutely right. I think the masking is a real problem. I really do. I, I'm exactly the same as you. I mean, the way that I prepare my bedroom in the evening, you know, and my partner's cool with that. She, she's absolutely accepting of it. So I would prepare the room. I'd have windows open. I like fresh air, you know, so there's sound, there's a sound source. I deliberately live in a town. I'm by the seaside, but I live in a place where there's hustle or bustle. Okay. I like that. You know, mm -hmm. I like that energy. So I'm living with that. I then got the sound therapy app very quietly. So it's just sprinkling. Right, right. But I'm, I'm also allowing for my own sound and I can be play there. with that also. Yeah. And it's exactly what you're saying. Yeah. And it's like I'm taking responsibility for it. Yeah. Um, and that's really, really important. And, yeah. and therefore, you know, you really start to check your own tinnitus and you can start to but you're not checking on it in a way where you're dwelling on it. You're not going, oh, uh, yeah. oh yeah. which is what yeah. I used to do years ago. Yeah. I'm just being in control of it, but I'm not a control freak. I'm yes. not controlling it. I'm yeah. just understanding it yeah. and I'm acknowledging it and I'm giving it a little bit of energy and then I'll chuck it away for a while. Yeah. But I yeah, 100%. Yeah, no, um, especially, I think, because the question we had earlier, uh, when does the masking become problematic? I think it's exactly what you say, when you try to shut it out completely. So the masking, yeah. for example, using all the great tools that you guys build, is an additional way to hook your attention on something else as well, if you want to, if you choose so, right? So yes, you can absolutely. use that sound to also hook your attention, just simply because in that moment, maybe it's a more comfortable sound to hook your attention to. Um, and the second one that I wanted to say is um, I, I, I really I, I really believe in um, in in the fact that, you know, out of these anxiety problems and the delay of these of, of wanting to face these these feelings that the tinnitus um, the, the tinnitus pain and, and anxiety and fear and sadness, most of it, yeah, if you can stop to control it if you can stop to try to manipulate it in a certain way and because unfortunately we cannot i've i've have had clients who uh, all the new technologies uh, i don't even want to mention the name because afterwards i get in trouble hasn't worked for them yeah and they they just try to find something to you know to still not having to deal with it but that creates 80 to 90 percent of the anxiety so that or the pain of the associated pain. So the original physiological pain from having tinnitus, right? So it was like, you have tinnitus and hyperacusis maybe, or maybe at least a little bit, little bit of sound sensitive. Let us say that's 10 to 20% of your, of your pain level, right? But the whole process, the thought process that costs you the major energy. Yeah, many people tell me like, you know what? I feel like I'm at 95% tuning into my tinnitus the whole time. I can't let it go. I have no energy left for anything else. And I say to them, you know, this is the amplified pain. This is the pain that is on top of the physiological effect that you have tinnitus. This is pain that you cause with this cycle of 
anxiety and tuning into tinnitus, perceiving it in that way. And a lot of it, and that's why I want to draw the circle is come back to what you said with mainstream media, in my opinion, also Google. So when people yeah. have the ability to Google tinnitus and they, first of all, fuel their anxiety by 3000%. Yeah. Yes. So it's yeah. all a socialization problem as well, right? 40 years ago, there was nothing like that. So you had to move on, right? Yes. You're yeah, absolutely right. It's absolutely right. And it's the same thing with, um, we have a little Facebook page, but it's really positive. I'm not being falsely positive because if yeah. there is an issue, right. our, our little Facebook group is littered with little fantastic health professionals that people right. don't realize that are in there so that we want to be able to have a solution. We're solution based. So, but in the early days, I used to look at forums and things and I'd be, oh That's God. Terrible, yeah. It, it's so negative. And I felt yeah. so sorry for those people that were writing yeah. in there. And again, that just creates confusion, doesn't it? And it, bad information is really vital to not controlling your tinnitus and right. yet great information and wonderful, right. fresh, trusted, truthful information right. is just enriching to anybody suffering from tinnitus. Right. It was it was really when I went and saw a hearing therapist, I saw this amazing woman called Penny Stannard, who's in the south of England. And I it was at a time in 2008 where I was really struggling. And um, I was getting a handle on the sound therapy that was working. But I like you were saying, I couldn't get a handle on the exasperated effects of negative thinking. That's what I couldn't get away from. I'm a very positive person by nature and um, I don't give in. I love a challenge and I'm all up for the journey, but it was really, I couldn't find a way out of the tinnitus maze. And uh, so I went to see this wonderful woman. I went privately and saw her for an afternoon. And again, it was enlightening. In a sense, what she did was she already had tinnitus. So I trusted her because I knew that I was going to a place of safety. And she just basically gave me some wonderful insights that were very simple. But because I believed her, it worked for me because I knew that what she was saying was truthful mm. and it was great clinical information. And it's like like you're saying, when you can offer really good evidence based clinical information, along with really good hearing therapy, along with great sound therapy, when you put those three things to, together, You've got the most powerful management for tinnitus. And it's something that for me with the hearing therapy, I only had one afternoon, that information, the hyperacusis that I was really suffering from went within a week. Wow. Because it was easy then for me to work out what had happened. Right. I then knew about sound levels. I knew what was dangerous. I knew right, right. that if I just put this on a, a leather couch, in the old days, I would have thought, oh, my God, you know, that's going to make my tinnitus bad for yeah. another yeah. year. Yeah. I yeah. Is that connection? Myself, yeah, I had great yeah. information. So I, yeah. I still do it. I, I almost physically have my hands behind my back when I'm out at the high street. I won't do that even if there's an ambulance next to me because I've so trained myself to not react and go, ah, you know, wow. I've that I have to deal with it. And yes, that is going to give me a spike. But I know that as long as that alarm from an ambulance isn't going 24 hours, I know that it's not going to damage my ears. So I'm confident with the information. And that's the thing. Mm. I think it's having confidence in the information. Yeah. So therefore, it's almost like you're walking around. My perception is that I feel like I'm uh, almost like the predator in Predator 2. I'm like this creature and I'm taking in everything. I'm like a little kind of got this computer going. I'm scanning all the time. I'm going, yeah, that's a lovely sound source. So the motorbike is nice because I've made sound therapy in the industrial series, which is desensitization. So I've made motorbikes sound lovely. And because I bathe myself in industrial sounds, the way that I now perceive a motorbike is that it's totally non-threatening and it's a nice sound because I've made it sound great in my mind. Right. If there's an ambulance, yes, I don't particularly like it, but I, I try and find some sort of excitement in that sound. 
it's a bit overwhelmed so it's like <laughs> god well i, I haven't stuff. reached that level yet for ambulances i, I but i'm I, but i think i'm also fairly sure that the ambulances in germany are louder so i when the yeah, ambulance but- comes i I, I'm sorry, but I take my hearing aid out and I and I put that like all other sounds. I'm fine, but the ambulance yeah. really. This is one thing where I'm like, no, no, I'm not. I'm not having it. Like any other sound, but ambulances, I'm not having it. No, no, I, I, I'm not. I think, no, and I mean, I think that's the thing. I think the reason I do it is because I was so um, for almost ten years I was gridlocked. I didn't really want to fly anymore because I was too. Um, uh, fearful of the journey to the airport okay. I was happy traveling for 10 years and right. all over the place but right. there was something about the airplane I used to love flying but I think I was just I didn't know whether it was going to hurt my hearing system I wasn't confident but right. Right. so the reason in the app I really worked on industrial sounds was because of my own failings you know I couldn't really get my mind into gear to to get a sensible reaction to sounds. so you know, the reason there is a train is that even when I used to do recording sessions, I live on an island. So I'd have to go outside of my house, which was loud. It's all traffic. I'm on a main road. I then walk down to a boat that's vibrating. So that makes it loud. I then get on a train. And then when I got to Waterloo in London, I'd get on a tube train and then I'd get on an overground. So, it, you know, and then I'd have to do a session, which was I, so I, every time I felt like I was going into this gladiatorial arena and that mm. I might die if a lion ate me with sound. Wow. But I didn't, but I still didn't get any control over it. Yeah. Although I would do it and it felt great and a great achievement, yeah. it wasn't until I started to really use the concept of desensitization. In a yeah. way, yeah. what I was doing was I was positively brainwashing myself, but that was really important. Yeah. It was... I was creating those sounds that I was fearful of and I was making them beautiful. And my mantra throughout my whole life has always been harmony and beauty through conflict. For some reason, that's just the way I've lived my entire expressive life. I like conflict. Well, I don't think I necessarily like it, but that just seems to happen. Right. And it's how do I make that a beautiful journey? How do I create something nice out of that? And that's always been my kind of journey in a way which is why I feel comfortable talking to you about all this because that was obviously preordained I was meant to experience that in this lifetime obviously because I don't regret having tinnitus now at all I really don't it's it's made sense to have had it and to do what I'm doing now I understand that what I wouldn't have understood is me giving up and I've been told and when I was 22 the specialist in the hospital said um do you mind if you can't hear music when you're playing your instrument of course i mind if i can't hear it how do i respond and he said well in that case you better give up so i was told give up and actually in many respects again conflict you know you know how dare you but i didn't say that to him but how can you tell someone like that how can you tell someone that what what on earth yeah, I, well, I, I mean, it's a different world then. The, the world now, the ENT in the hospital I, I, I um, go to now, is, it's the same place, actually, but it's like it's a completely different world. It's uh, full of people that understand, that listen. There's a great doctor there, a surgeon called Dr. Bazavaraj, who's really a friend now, who has helped right from the beginning. But that was the old days. I had this miserable guy that, you know, when I was 22, I could hear him. As the door was slightly open, he was on the phone to his mate and he said, I'll just get rid of this one and we'll get on the golf course. And I had to walk into that room. Oh, man. But it was the best thing that could happen because it was that that anger that I felt gave me the energy to do something about my condition. Yeah, it's like, uh, screw you, my friend. I'll show you how. Yeah. It really is. You're absolutely right. It is. Yeah. And, it, and that's that thing, isn't it? You either make up your mind to not give in or you fight. You fight like hell to try and get equilibrium. But right. that's the trouble. Is The way I feel now is that I don't fight anymore. I just understand it. I acknowledge it. There's no war anymore. And that's the trouble. That was yeah. where I was also failing. That's where you free up the energy as well. Yeah. 
you do. It's like you're creating, it's like playing a sport whereby you're being attacked. Right. And that's fine. You know, the, the greatest the back. team in the world is Italy. Yeah. And the way they play yeah. defensive counterattack. It's like, in a way, what I'm trying to do with what I'm doing with the music and the sound therapy is it's like you're getting this thing coming at you, but you're creating this positive chi energy, like a like a sort of 70s kind of kung fu movie where they're coming for you and you just don't even do anything. Just do what you want. It's not going to hurt me because I don't see it like that anymore. Right. I don't see the tinnitus like that. It's like right. the idea is that you just push it away just properly. Yeah. You acknowledge it. You give it time, give right. it the energy it deserves, and then try and work out, understand it, and then it just goes. Like, leave it alone now. Okay, I've, I've enjoyed that moment to understand it, but now, you know what, Tinnitus? Just quietly go away now. It's like, you know, we don't even have to be friends anymore. I'm just going to say goodbye. Yeah, it just is what it is. Yeah. And um, I wanted to mention and ask you, uh, first of all, one thing that we touched upon was um, we also have our uh, positive community because that is something that's deeply at my heart as well. Um, and I'm trying to uh, convince people to spend more time in positive communities where it is about supporting each other than uh, in a community where you each uh, comment below a post that you can't deal with it anymore. Um, and fuel your anxiety mutually and your anger and despair on the people who are not doing anything against it. Um, but uh, and, and people, my listeners, they know where to find my community. But where can find pe where can people find your community? Also on Facebook, does it have this a special name that uh, people can look for? Uh, that's really great. Thanks. So yeah, on we are on Instagram and we go under the name of Tinnitus Minus. So you can find us on Tinnitus Minus on Instagram. On Facebook, we have a little group which is called the T minus tinnitus wellness support group and uh we're on linkedin as well which is how luckily we found one another frida yes. we're on a t minus tinnitus wellness app Perfect. and Perfect. i think it's i'd like to just say what you're doing is i think absolutely extraordinary i've been following it there's another guy i really like and i think he's you've probably interviewed him i don't know but i'm very impressed with him his name is called ben thompson have you yeah. met ben Yes, oh, Ben man. is also on my on my podcast. Ben is phenomenal. Ben is phenomenal. I love what he does. I yeah. love it, the work he does. Um, yeah. And I wish him all the very, very best. I think he's terrific. But again, I'd like also if it's possible. And, and I think there is a, also another great association. We have the BTA, which is superb. Yeah. But then we've been dealing a lot with the Australian Tinnitus Association. Okay, interesting. They're very progressive. They're oh, amazing awesome. and run by this incredible woman called Victoria Didenko, who is another tinnitus activist, warrior, amazing person. And we met her at the British Tinnitus Association a few years ago. James Rodley, who's my co-founder and I, we became friends with her. And she gives the most incredible support to her tinnitus community and has supported our project. We've been so lucky with some of the people, Frida. I'm sure it's been the same for you. It's like... Um, It's an absolute pleasure to be on this journey. You know, it's never going to end. I'm not yeah. going to stop. You know, I, I'm still developing. We're, you know, we're nowhere near where we want to be yet. We, we've only just started. It's going to be a lifetime's work. It's like we said at the beginning, it's purely devotional, you know. It's very, very encouraging that you say that. And um, I, I told you as well, this is um, uh, definitely very far away from monetary reasons. It's also uh, leaving a legacy. Um, I always, I, I, I mean, this is a do me, but I always tell my wife, you know, if ever I go and my podcast is still here and there's just people who still hear that and get their anxiety reduced and get that content, that's all I want, man. You know, that's 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 what what really gives sense to this and and that's why i'm doing this and why i'm why i'm also so grateful for having uh, uh, you on the show today because it was inspiring and to hear your story and how how you have transformed it and um uh, you're a, a, a big role model for for all the people out there who especially have that a very difficult combination of hyperacusis and tinnitus and i think that uh, This will be very, very, very beneficial for, for many of the listeners. And I'll make sure. Um, so if she's listening to us, um, 
uh, the lady from the Australian Tinnitus Association. Uh, she's warmly uh, welcomed and invited to uh, come on to my podcast here as well. And I want to say, and this is a big, big, big props, the British Tinnitus Association is doing great work. Unfortunately, we don't have such a strong association here in Germany. Um, I am connected with a few associations here in Germany, but I think that we, we do still have to do a lot of work, in, uh, especially here in Germany, on yeah, giving that support out, yeah. Absolutely. It's been fantastic talking to you, Frida. I've, I've loved every minute of it. You're very passionate, like myself, about this subject matter. And it, it is. I can't just sit here and go, oh, hello. Yes, I know. Uh, you know, yeah. it's got to be arms out. You know, um, yeah, I, I, yeah, you can't I can't keep still when I'm talking about this. It's 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 it's, it's a massive part of my life. It's shaped me completely shaped me. Yeah. Yeah, same here. And um, one one last question that I wanted to ask you, because I think it's so interesting that you have all this knowledge and the wisdom. And, you know, I'm I myself, I'm I, I, I love to get into meditation. One of my very, very good buddies, he's uh, going on a retreat in 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 uh, Thailand as well soon. And we're, we're both very passionate about um, meditation. And I love I love Sam Harris, uh, the guy who wrote Waking Up and uh, yeah. basically made it um, a bit more secular. Right. Because I'm not so religious or. So, I love that. Um, so from your experience, what would you have, as someone your age now, what would you have given advice to your, let's say, 22-year-old self? What, what was the, the, the single most, you know, the biggest thing that you could take away and say, like, how can people tackle and deal with this? And what is the advice of someone who's been able to transform this who has the wisdom of dealing with this and has created a great app that's supporting people out there and what 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 are what are the words of encouragement for the people out there <laughs> the, the, the the big one more than anything is to really simply say to all of those people is that you are not alone quite simply is that you don't have to suffer yes. anymore and i don't even like the word suffer i It's uncomfortable. I, I, I've used it today, but I sort of have my own rule where I, I never use that word. It's not that it's negative. It's just that it, mm. it is negative and I don't want mm. it. Mm. You are not alone is a really important thing to say to people. The other thing I would say is use the health professionals because it's a different world now from 30 years ago is that they are tremendous. And really do try and work with your GP to start with, because unfortunately they may not have a roadmap for tinnitus, right. and, but it's not their fault. Right. It's not anybody's fault. It's not right. your fault for right. not knowing. No. You've just got to try and use the system the best way you can. Yeah. Make sure you're checked to start with if you're new to tinnitus. That's what I would have done, which I did, yeah. Yeah. but then I wouldn't have left it with the ENT. I left it because I didn't know any other path mm. and there was nothing else. Right. So I would go to your doctor, get a lovely route together. ENT is quite a long wait, which is fine. On the Isle of Wight, it's not at the moment. They've done really well to make it seven to eight weeks, but go and see an audiologist. That's really, really important because they'll also be able to offer you some super advice. And some audiologists have a hearing therapy experience and that's really, really important. Next, Join a group or talk to people, share your pain or share your anxiety if that's what you're feeling, but don't keep it to yourself. Don't isolate. Yeah. Yeah. Again, the, really the, 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 the catchphrase here is you are not alone. Do not self-isolate. Make sure you have the big conversations with people and tell your loved ones, let people know. I think in a way, I think what we need to also have is almost a group for the partners And the yeah, lockdowns. yeah. Because I, I've made a pod, I, I've made a podcast episode with my wife um, about her, about her understanding what tinnitus is and means and so on and so forth. And it turned out to be in very very uh, interesting, right? Because she had never heard of that before she met me, even. So it's very, very conflicting, right? But uh, very yes. helpful, But, yeah. To talk very about much that. so. I mean, I think that's really important. Is just to make sure that really. Um, I think you've just got to let people know where you're at. Certainly in music, there's a lot of people that still feel afraid to be able to tell people that they've got tinnitus in case they can't work. You know, so mainly with producers and engineers, not so much with musicians because we're a very open breed, but certainly with producers, 
They yeah. fear that a, a record company may not want to acknowledge their work yeah. if they feel they can't hear. But we yeah. attenuate, you yeah. attenuate. Yeah. You understand sound, you understand how it works. You're yeah. used to your own sound. Yeah. So yeah, really, I think um, education would have been important for me. But there are so many routes now. I would go to see you. I would go and see the T minus group. I would go and see the British Chinese Association. I would just really arm myself with safe places to go, not forums. Get away from them. Yeah, very true. Great. Rupert, it's been such a big pleasure. And this surely isn't the last time that you're on this podcast. And um, I really want to thank you for your time, your great insights. Um, I can I can uh, really see that I, as soon as the restrictions and all of this uh, is getting a bit better, we could uh, at some point maybe meet up and, and have a chat in person. I would really, really be interested in that. I would absolutely love to. I, I get the feeling that our path is going to cross quite a lot here, actually, Frida. And maybe we'll have a private conversation next yeah. week because maybe I wouldn't mind your insights in the next stage with what we're doing. I want to always have the discussions with great people. And I, and I see that you're a really great person, Frida. And uh, yeah, we're going to, I think we'll have a friendship. Definitely. Yeah. Looking forward to that, Rupert. Thank you so much for being on the show today. Uh, the people can find all the information um, to uh, all the resources that you mentioned in the show notes. Go check out the T-Minus app on the App Store. Um, and yeah, Rupert, thank you so much for, for joining us here today. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll hear each other soon. Bye. Take care, Rita. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yes, so that was the episode with Rupert Brown, um, founder of the T-Minus app from the UK. I hope you guys all enjoyed it, took some valuable insights and lessons from the conversation I had with Rupert. I certainly really enjoyed having him on the show. And again, I want to extend my thanks for uh, to Rupert and his team for doing such great work in the Tinnitus community. Again, I want to alert you guys to the fact that you can always go to my website at outdrinktinnitus.com and fill an application if you're interested in working with me and dealing with your tinnitus anxiety, building your best life despite tinnitus. Um, also extending again my invitation to have you join the Most Positive Tinnitus online community. We have weekly live events where I share some uh, strategies and tips. But uh, the most prominent thing that I would like to invite you to is the Patreon community for little as 10 years a month you can become a member of the patreon community you can find a survey to tinnitus spikes and a general tinnitus survey that will help you identify the uh, most biggest problems for you and then also find some tools of acceptance and commitment therapy in there and how to use them in order to literally outring your tinnitus so i hope that you guys found this episode helpful i wish you all the best with your tinnitus know that tinnitus is not a life sentence and i'm here people like rupert are here we are here to help you and to literally help you turn your life back around into your best life despite tinnitus. So I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye. Thank you very much for listening to the Outring Tinnitus podcast. I am looking forward to also welcome you on my website at outringtinnitus.com or if you have any questions, please mail to frida at outringtinnitus.com. See you next time.